Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Geeky Crossing here, and today we've got another episode of my series of villager garden ideas. And today, the villager in question is the gorgeous Diana. I love this villager. Um, she was the second dreamy I got, and I think the world of her. Um, and today she's gonna spotlight, and we're gonna do five different ideas for her garden. So I'm gonna start off with some in-game stone path, and go over this little area up here. So I've sped, th sped this up a fair amount, um, mainly because I'm really indecisive and change everything around all the time. I wanted to put a bath here and some cherry blossom branches. So basically I was just going about trying to get that to fit and make it look good so I had to extend it a bit because um, if you've watched any of my others you'll know that I'm really bad at guessing how much space I'm going to need for items. We had Sherb last time and he is another favourite of mine, he's definitely I think my favourite villager. And um, him and Diana uh, were always really really good friends on my island so I thought it was only fitting that she'd be the next villager that we do. So I'm going in with a custom design here of cherry blossom petals because I wanted to make this build quite cherry blossom themed. So you can find that custom code in my custom code video that I did after I released my island tour. Any custom codes that I use that aren't in that video, I'll put in this video up on the screen so you can get them if you want. So yeah, I wanted to feature some statues because I wanted to make this look really classy, really elegant. So I used the turkey day stands with the flower bouquets on top in pink and white. The blossom viewing lanterns in the black customization in the back and the director chair in front, front of the cherry blossom branches to the left as well. I like to normally incorporate maybe two to three seating areas in an, a villager garden if possible, because um, I think it just makes it a lot more interesting and adds a lot more options to the island. So yeah, I went in with some cherry blossom piles as well because I think they're really lovely and I just love that effect when you walk through them and I like to put the um, this custom code under it as well because it fills out the rest of the square sometimes that the cherry blossom petals don't reach. I did go through and remove some of these custom uh, codes later on because I realised I did go possibly slightly overboard with it. <laughs> And then I put the garden wagon there and I've used pink, white and purple flowers because, well, those are Diana's colours. And then I added a decoy duck there in white and the um, cherry blossom umbrella as um, like a big flower. Um, I had a go at adding in some mermaid items, but ultimately I changed that later on because I just didn't feel it kind of fit the rest of the style. So yeah, just using more and more flowers to fill out the areas and trying to work out uh, where I could put more items and just kind of playing around with it a bit, uh, which I encourage you to do with kind of every build is just kind of keep picking up the items and trying different things underneath them um, always trying to think about how you can make it more interesting and adding things in the background and playing around with things like that and making sure you've got cute little photo spots so you can get really nice screenshots of your island so yeah um, as you can see here I've just tried to try a few different things putting under the picnic set I don't actually have any picnic blankets saved because uh, I end up filling up my slots too quickly with other stuff uh, but on my next island I'm definitely going to be doing that so yeah, um, I then tried to see if I could incorporate some uh, mosh parasols to kind of separate the areas up a little bit uh, to add some definition into the kind of three separately designed bits. So I just had to play around with kind of what I could do with that so it would still be walkable. And yeah, I think the mum cushions look super cute with the picnic set and I think it goes really well. Um, Marshall running about in the background. Oh, he's cute. Would you like Marshall? 
I will be doing a video for him that will be coming up soon because obviously I've already got him on my island. Um, so the way I'm doing it at the moment is I'm doing all the villages that are on this island. But if um, there's been a couple of people that have asked for like sp specific villages and um, I've been able to get them quite easily, so I've done I've done them. Um, I do have one coming up that someone's asked for. So if there was a villager that you would like me to see, you would like to see me do then you can just let me know in the comments and if I can and I can find that villager easily enough to trade with then I will absolutely put, put them on my list yeah so I'm just kind of going in here with more of the cherry blossom items like the bonsai and things like that and more lanterns and um, yeah then it was finished so I'll show you the shots so you can see there I've used the lily record player I was really trying to get a picture where you could see Diana but she kept trying to hide behind the statue um, so yeah, the iron garden bench there, so that's one seating area, and I've used the mermaid lamp with a magazine on a log stool, some purple hyacinths, and the log stakes in birch. And then in the centre, the, there's a wooden end table in white with a cherry blossom bonsai on, and you can see all the lanterns and everything else that I've already mentioned. And um, I really like the hyacinths, I think they're super pretty. And then that's the outdoor bath at the back as well in the white customization. And yeah, I was quite happy with how uh, this one came out. I think it looks really good and I think it suits Diana. So yeah, we'll move on to the next one now, a uh, bit more of a bleak day. So I had a bit more of an idea, I, whenever I see Diana out and about, she's always sat somewhere reading with her glasses on. So I wanted to make her a little reading nook at the back of the island, and um, so I uh, wanted to keep it fitting in with her aesthetic, so of course I used the uh, white bookshelves, but I did like the contrast of the in-game, just uh, wood flooring, I thought that looked quite nice. And I set up a piano there, uh, the cute lamp in pink and the cute chair. And then just going in with some more of the cute items in pink and white. Sugar and cream set on top of the cute table. Yeah, so I'm just adding in cushions there um, to make it a bit more of a like a little cozy area and a book. And then I just wanted to kind of add a bit more depth to it. So I added in a stool there, made sure you could still walk around. And then had a little play around with what other items I could add in. Yeah, so I had this log, this uh, extra long log sofa, and this is a custom code that I had. Again, you can catch that in my custom codes video. And a rattan low table in white, and I thought that looked quite cute. So, and I quite liked that in front of the library because um, it looked quite kind of peaceful and sleepy and cozy, and I quite liked that. So I went in and just slathered the place in custom codes, and then uh, went about adding in like a bit more of a water feature just to kind of keep with that sort of very pretty relaxing sort of theme and then I wanted to put something in the middle of the pond to make it a bit more interesting so I went in with a bird cage and a decoy duck on top of the custom code that I've got for a puddle and then I added in the wedding bench up at the top and the cherry blossom pond stone and then I'm just going in with the turkey day garden stand there with the magazine on top that I used in the last one and decorating with flowers. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to add a few more items to kind of make it a bit more interesting and add some different heights um, into the design. And then I'm just going to add in a path up to Diana's house um, to kind of break up the areas a little bit as well. And it directs uh, your eye as well on like the three different areas and I like to fill the sand in with custom codes so that like fossils don't spawn there and stuff just for the sake of pictures I 
and then I added in a tree there because it wasn't going to interfere with any photo spots and then I grabbed a pile of flowers from my little flower area up there and um, filled a pile more of Diana's garden in flowers and I kept it to white, pink and purple. I don't use white or pink roses because I am not the actual the biggest fan of roses to be honest in this game. I do like the lilies so. though. So yeah, again, just adding in a few more items um, just to fill it out a bit more. I really do like uh, busy builds, um, especially for anything other than like suburban city but, uh, or certain like city build things, like just personally, like I think I'd struggle to do anything that didn't look super busy or cluttered. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and show you the pictures now for this one. So yeah, I'm going to start this one off by using um, these two kind of moon patterns that I've got for like a pathway. I wanted this one to be like really, really kind of sweet, sort of celeste, a fairy core, a white, pink and purple. So I went in with some kind of mush parasols and some trees and the mush lamps to start with to kind of block off some areas uh, to give me a guide uh, to work with and filled up some more of the bulky areas with uh, bigger items to give me a guide for where I might put the smaller and more decorative things. I always try and make everything accessible because I really hate going up to and be like, oh my god, yay, I want to sit on that and you can't get to it. Um, I do have a couple of things that you can't quite get to, but I try to keep like as much as possible fully accessible. Yeah, I just grabbed some flowers Again, just sticking with the same colour scheme as the other designs because I do like the kind of garden ideas that I do to kind of still try and fit the villager as much as possible. So I try and match it to like their house and their like personality and like the colours that the villager has on as well. So yeah, um, I really like using the doll houses in like uh, fairy core stuff. So I went in with the pink one and Nova lights in pink and white. Yeah, I love using a lot of flowers in fairy core. So that's what I'm doing here and lots of custom codes as well to make the ground look really, really busy and just filled with life. I'm just kind of going between all the areas, decorating with things like the butterfly models and log furniture and then um, the hyacinth lamp as well and surrounding that with some hyacinths and um, I've also got some star fragments that I'll drop around as well and I had a play around to see if I could get this outdoor bath to fit in and then try to work out if I could maybe move it over this side so I did spend quite a while trying to figure out how I could get this to work and moving items around so <laughs> please excuse that but this is the benefit I've done it so you don't have to you'll know now if, if you want if you have a space like this and you want to know where you can put an outdoor bath this this is where you can put it uh, keep watching it does get moved again and again and again um yeah here we go <laughs> ends up having to move absolutely everything to get it to fit because uh, my mush parasols were just like one little bit too far forward so I moved the placement of the flowers and just put them behind the bath uh, I thought that looked um, nice anyway kept the chair accessible and um, put some more custom codes down and replaced that destination signpost where it was meant to be just add in a couple more lamps and things like that and the log stakes as well because I think they look really cute in the birch for a fairy core build and now I'm just trying to position everything so it's not too linear and kind of just make make everything look quite natural and busy 
and lived in. So yeah, I'm just playing around with the mosh parasols here and the positioning of them and moving everything around. Um, I get quite pernickety um, sometimes <laughs> um, and it really annoys me when I can't get things absolutely perfect. And I tried the Aquarius Sun and then decided that I really didn't like it and it looked really bulky and didn't go at all. So I quickly took it away and pretended that it never happened. So I was having a look to see what I had in my inventory and what I could place. And um, I kind of kept looking and trying to develop the idea. So I used a mixture of fragments, Nova Lights and star clocks and the fragment I used a mixture of large star fragments and the normal sized ones as well because this gives a really good size variety and dropping star fragments does not count towards your island's dropped items because they can spawn naturally so any dropped items that spawn naturally like mushrooms or sticks or fragments don't count towards your items so yeah this one was just finished with so I'll show you the aesthetic shots now So yeah, we'll move on to the next design now. I'm just gonna start with mapping out the farm. So I wanted to do um, a specific theme for this one. I wanted to give Diana her own little lavender farm. Um, I've seen a few other people do this and I thought it looked really, really cute. I downloaded a custom code, which I'll show at the end of this build um, for a lavender farm. It's super, super cute. There are loads and loads of them. I just searched up lavender in the design portal at Abel's and I really liked this one and thought it went with the design aesthetic that I was going for. So that's why I chose this one. And again, yeah, I will show it at the end of like this idea rather than at the end of the video. And then, yeah, I just wanted to add in some water and change up the design quite a bit for this one. If I was going to actually properly do this on my island, I would give myself like a lot more space so I could like link it up properly. So I wanted this one to feature water quite heavily. I like adding water, water into farm builds anyway because it makes sense for a farm to have accessible water. Um, I know we live on an island, but I mean like their own source. Um, so I wanted uh, to give this one quite a large amount and to make it look really kind of personal and Diana's own little space um, and I use this custom path of the uh, kind of wood planks and again that's in my custom code video so I mapped out where I wanted the planks to go so I could cut the water in between to make lots of little waterfalls And then I went in and added in the waterfall at the top so it made sense. And then, yeah, I could get to decorating. So I plonked down some custom codes. And then went in with the same kind of extra long log sofa that I've used previously. And the sideways pirate barrel. Um, and then I had a look at the items I had on me. Realised that I had, I had taken a lighthouse and not a silo. So ran back to my house, cut that bit out and got the actual item that I wanted. And positioned it there so I could fit the garden um, the garden thing in in the back the garden wagon there we go threw some clovers on the ground because I like mixing up the floor designs I only have two if you don't count like the cherry blossom petals for like ground cover but I use the cherry blossom petals quite regularly um, I kept plant planting the same hyacinths that hadn't sprouted so I kept getting really annoyed you'll see me just plant the same hyacinths that aren't flowered yet again and again and again um and then I, I throw them away at some point and um well not throw them away i mean i go and plonk them somewhere to go and grow so <laughs> there we go again 
So yeah, I like to kind of decorate the outlying areas as well to kind of link the two areas in between. I'm not doing that so much here because obviously I'm changing this out for multiple villages quite regularly. So yeah, I filled in the lavender farm with the best of the purple hy hyacinths and put a scarecrow in the middle and then just kind of decorated the outlying areas. Obviously this ended up being quite a small area to work with once I'd added in the water feature in the farm, but I was quite pleased with it and I thought that it would still look really, really nice. So I'll go ahead and show you the shots from this. So here is the design code, so you might want to pause it right now if you wanted to take it down. I'll also have it in the description for you to take a note of as well. So yeah, we'll just move on to the last design now. So I wanted to do a more kind of city core one, seeing as I'd kind of done quite a lot of uh, fairy core or sort of like white cottage core <laughs> kind of design so far. So I wanted to do this one to contrast with the others. So I started off with the in-game arched stone path. And then uh, next to it, I was going to do a different area, so I just used the stone, the normal stone path, uh, so the paths wouldn't join. And then uh, rounded the corners as well. And then, yeah, so for this one, I wanted to have like a fashion shop next to Diana's house. And I wanted this one to kind of stick with the cherry blossom theme that we had earlier. So I used the Zen fence and I used some cherry blossom items as well where I can fit them. And I just used the iron garden furniture in white because I think it looks really pretty and I think it kind of goes with the style quite well. So I did like the bench there but I ended up changing it out because these branches like you couldn't smoothly walk past them there. So I kept trying to move them about and seeing where it would work for the rest of the furniture that I had as well. Yeah, so I extended the path out here and added in these two uh, squares of the wood path so I could put some cherry blossom, uh, the lanterns there. Um, and then I went up and placed a utility pole here so when you look up you'll see it from the bottom. And then I went about placing the items on the stall so I used a typewriter and a sewing uh, kit. And then I placed an elaborate kimono stand on its side uh, there and then used an old sewing machine and, um, oh, I've forgotten the other one. Oh, I've, I've totally forgotten. A spinning wheel, that was it, yeah. And then I placed down two pro designs that I got from someone. Yeah, and then in front of that I placed uh, two pro designs that I've downloaded and placed a couple more up at the top as well and an umbrella stand and some more custom codes down at the bottom just to really fill it out and make it look busy and then I placed one behind the stall to make it look as if someone's there and I did them in a purple uh, pro design that I downloaded so it would link with the um, theme of Diana and I gave Diana an elaborate kimono stand in purple um, so her house would look linked with the shop and the colours would link with hair as well. And then I planted a purple and a white hyacinth in front of the house. And yeah, that was it for this one. So yes, I hope that these were useful to you and you may be able to take some sort of design elements or inspiration from these. Um, if you do, feel free to tag me in anything on social media. It's all linked, um, especially on my page.
If there are any vill villages you'd like to see me do, as I've said before, drop it down in the comments and I will try and get around to it. I intend on doing as many as possible and if I know it's going to benefit someone that likes my content, then even better. So thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!